Hi, in this video I'll go through question 1G on Math 2019. And here we have A, B and C all greater than zero and three equations involving A, B and C. And we want to know which of these statements about how many uh, solutions there are for A, B and C exist, which of these are true uh, from these equations. All right, so I prefer doing algebra with exponents rather than with logarithms. So first, I'm going to get rid of these logs and turn these into equations with exponents instead. So if we look at this first equation, so log base A of B is just saying, what number do I need to raise A to to get B? So if log base A of B is C, then that's saying that A to the power of C will be equal to B. And we can do the same thing for these two other equations. And they will tell us that b to the power of c plus 3 over 2 is equal to a, and that c to the power of b is also equal to a. So we basically have three simultaneous equations. So I'm going to label these as equations 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so we've basically got to solve, the, well, try to solve these equations and see if we can get unique or infinitely many or no solutions for a, b, and c. So we can see that each of these equations uh, involve both or well, all of A, B, and C. So we might want to do some substituting or eliminating to uh, get equations in terms of just two of those. And the easiest one to eliminate is probably A, because we've got 2 and 3, where we've got A in terms of something else. And it might be tempting to put these two equal to each other. So something like this. But then we've got B in terms of of b to the powers of c and also c to the powers of b and that's quite difficult to solve but instead we could for example substitute this uh, equation 2 into equation 1 which would give us b to the power of c plus 3 over 2 all to the c uh, which is this a to the c by substituting this a in here is equal to b and because we know that b is positive we can cancel a b from both sides and that will leave us with b to the power of c times c plus 3 over 2, so that's this power here, minus 1 from uh, cancelling a b is equal to 1. But b is a variable, it can be anything, so how do we get that equaling a constant 1? Um, well, what do we have to raise things to? What power do we raise uh, things to to get 1? Um, we'd have to raise them to power 0, right? So that tells us that this power here must be equal to 0. And this on the left-hand side is just a quadratic in C, and we can solve that. So we can expand this bracket out and get c squared plus 3 over 2c minus 1 equal to 0. And um, I prefer working with whole numbers, so I'm going to multiply through by 2. And that will leave us with 2c squared plus 3c minus 2 equals 0. And we can solve this however you want. Um, I'm going to use the quadratic formula. So using the quadratic formula, we get that a, uh, sorry c is equal to minus 3 plus or minus root 9 plus 16, which is just 25, uh, all over 4. And of course, if we have twenty a uh, square root of 25, that's just equal to 5. So c is minus 3 plus or minus 5 over 4, which, if you work it out, is equal to either a half or minus 2. But we know that c must be greater than 0, right? So we know that actually it can't be minus 2, and therefore c must be a half. So we do have a unique solution for c, so we can rule out uh, all the options where they say that c isn't unique. And now that we know that c is a half, we can try and work out a and b. So if I rewrite our equations using c equals a half, just to see what relations we have between a and b, we see that equation 1 becomes a to the half equals b, equation 2 becomes b squared equals a, which is just the same as 1, but all squared, and equation 3 becomes a half to the power of b equals a. So basically 2 and 3 now give us uh, two simultaneous equations for a and b. But what happens when we try to solve these? Um, well, if we, for example, try to get rid of the a, we see we'd end up with something like b squared equals a half to the power of b. And we can't solve that analytically uh, because we've got b to the power of something equals something to the power of b. So how do we know if these tell us a and b uniquely? Or if there even is a solution? 
um, well, we can look at this graphically instead. So we know how to draw b squared, right? And we can also draw a half to the b. So if we treat our a like we normally would y and our b like we normally would x, then this is just a normal quadratic. So it would look just like this. And I've only considered this first quadrant here because we know that a and b have to be positive. So uh, that's what a equals b squared would look like. And a equals a half to the power of b would just decay away like this. And we want values of a and b which work for both equations. So we're basically looking for the intersection. And we see there is only one intersection which means there is a unique solution for a and b. So we've got a unique c, which we know is a half, and a unique a and b, which we don't know, but we know they're unique. So our answer is going to be a.